And that is a little footage from Greg Hill, whose goal this year is to uh, climb and ski 2 million vertical feet. I can't even wrap my head around that. Greg joins us now to talk Hello, about Greg. it. Hello, Greg. And a whole lot more. So How what are you, the Greg? heck are you doing? What is this? What, 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 yeah, what am I? You know, Greg, I, I think this is our second interview with you, and both interviews have pretty much started the same. What are you doing? What? This is amazing, but maybe break it down for us. Yeah, it's kind of hard to quantify, even for me, who's trying to climb and ski two million feet. What is two million feet? I mean, I've, the highest building in Vancouver is the Shangri-La. It's about 650 feet, so sort of like climbing that uh, eight times a day, every day, all year. So. <laughs> is there a why? Is there a why? There's a why? Well, for me, the why is personal challenge and exploration. I mean, if I can spend the whole year challenging myself and then getting out and exploring. Yeah. Uh, and amazing. you started in South America, and, and maybe we should go through the logistics first, because when I heard this, you know, I'm child of the 80s. I'm thinking you strap your skis on your back, you climb up the mountain, nope. you take off your skis. But this is all inclusive, what you've Yeah, well, with th that's what's pretty amazing is technology has gotten to a point where it is quite easy. I mean, 20 years ago, oh, people couldn't do it. Well, yeah, yeah. nothing to do it. <laughs> but 20 years ago, people couldn't do what we do now. So I'll just, yeah, I'll quickly show it to you. I mean, first off, it's uh, the binding. Is it really neat? It's sort of like a cross-country binding. So while you're going up, you've got a free hill. You can yeah. see that? Typically this. So you can actually so hike with it. You can hike and yeah. you can stay level at, to a certain height. So you does don't the hike. boot have any ankle flex in it or does it? No, but the boot actually walks quite oh, easily. I see. Yeah. yeah. And so basically you're hiking up cross country style and what lets you go up is these skins on the bottom, which slide one way and grip the other. So you basically cross country it's ski. It's like up. shark skin. Yeah, it's made of it's made with goat hair and synthetics. <laughs> is that wow. really easier than, than climbing? Oh, like, way easier. Th think how fast cross country skiers go. So we do that but uphill. <laughs> and and how far along are you in this whole two million feet? Well, I started on January 1st, and uh, I'm ending on December 31st, so it's this year, and I'm at 83% right now. So <laughs> 1.66 million feet. Do you have to have a huge uh, amount of caloric intake to do what you're doing? I oh, yeah, definitely. I was, the fuel. Yeah, I, uh, I was curious, actually, one day, so I started to see what I bring in my lunch, and it's sort of three to 4,000 calories in my lunch. Just in, just in my lunch, lunch. <laughs> <Yeah>. Plus <laughs> double dinners and a big breakfast, so yeah, I eat Holy quite a bit. Holy moly. Uh, so the other side of this whole thing is uh, uh, family and hanging out. Uh, with your wife and your kids and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. How patient do they all have to be when... Well, when there's no doubt my wife is incredibly patient and... Um She's she here, say something good. Yeah, yeah, she's, exactly. she's, she's just something. over there she watching. <laughs> but no, I mean, obviously there's a, yeah, there has to be some level of understanding because uh, it's an all-year goal. And I do, quite often, I run out early in the morning and come back and be a dad as much as I can and a good husband. But uh, if anybody suffered in this, there's no doubt that she... Well, and you started your, uh, your year and your pursuit of 2 million vertical feet in South America. No, no. I started in, in Revelstoke. In the Stoke. In January. And then I went to South America when it was summer here and winter there. Uh, and how do you choose things? I mean, do you sort of have it mapped out through the year? What, what peaks you want to climb? And, and do you have, like, sort of a day-to-day? -day, you can't really plan ahead of time because of the conditions, avalanche and right. storms and weather. So I basically just let the winds and weather push me and, and make my decisions for me. We're going to look at some of the footage from right. South America right now. Maybe you can just tell us what we're looking at here. That's this is bad this, snowpack. Thing. Yeah, there's actually a lot of snow on the other side, but that's a, yeah, there's, there's a volcano. Basically, volcanic South America was all about climbing and skiing volcanoes, fast. and they're all gorgeous and pretty amazing place to be. So I, I just went down there. I didn't have any plan, and I just, like I said, I let the winds blow me. Beautiful and, conditions. Holy smokes. Yeah, occasionally it was like that, and then occasionally it wasn't. <laughs> it, it was brutal at times. It was really windy and really, really stormy, but then at other moments it was... Fantastic. So I guess you don't really have a choice. I mean, to, to sort of fit it in, you you know, you mentioned you fall in a week behind, but you really have to kind of keep on a certain pace. And yeah, yeah, it it's really easy to fall behind and quite hard. So to it's catch not back like up. you're getting those beautiful sunny days yeah. with you know champagne powder all the time. You no, know, definitely not. I thought <laughs> South America would have had a lot more, but I definitely get more of those beautiful days. So of here. course you're at the final stretch here. Uh, how much of a celebration are you going to have when you finally are at 100 percent? I think it's going to be pretty amazing. I mean, for me personally, just emotionally, it'll be this one-year build-up to this climactic point, and I think it'll feel quite good to take that monkey and you know. put it away. Do you know where you're, where you're going to finish? It'll, like, it'll do be you have a special step. spot that you're that you sort of hope you're going to finish at? The actual final turn? No, I, it'll be out of Revelstoke. I mean, that for me is my special zone, so it'll definitely be. And what will be next after this? Have you even thought about it? <laughs> Three or million. <laughs> Three million vacation? Or are you going to tackle I'm something else? I'm definitely going to re relax for a bit, but I'm I'm still passionate. I'm still full of energy. But there's uh, there's other goals, mountains to climb, yeah. things to do like that. But vertically. This will be my penultimate one year. 
yeah. how much you Well, and, and I, I mean, can you put it in perspective? Is there, it's, is there a way to sort of sum up what, what you've sort of learned so far or what you've, what you've sort of realized so far? Because the opportunity to get out in these places and, and see them is, I mean, it's something that most people can only dream about. Well, I think that's, I mean, the biggest thing everybody's like, did you come to some realization? Have you learned anything out there? I, I wouldn't say I've changed particularly, but I know that I'm quite lucky. And that to have spent a year doing what I'm doing is was you know the realization Incredible. that was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and to put that dedication into it too, and make that decision that you know this is what I want to try and do, and this is yeah. what I want to see, and and to be able to have those little moments throughout a year where you're sitting on the peak of a mountain. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? there, was some, there was definitely some really good moments, but like I say, for every good moment, there's there's some suffering. It's a little <laughs> bit of struggle, of I'm sure. There's cement well, that Greg, you have to ski through. Uh, we can't wait until you finish. We'll talk to you at the end of it, of course. You can go to Greg's website to find out more information greghill.ca to find out where he's at. I just noticed this is your signature ski as well. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, quite luckily enough, this company likes my my enthusiasm. It's called the Stoke. So can people buy those? It's yeah. called the Stoke. Yeah, the Stoke. So just the Stoke that the backcountry brings and hopefully that I bring to the backcountry too. And yeah, it's a it's a powder ski. Great awesome. powder ski. Nice. <laughs> Love it. Well, thank you, man. Mm -hmm. Appreciate you coming by today. We're going to take a break. Fun. When we come back, uh, a digital archivist from the city of Vancouver will be joining us. And if you don't know what that means, this is a repository for for the history of this city and of this region and the things that you can find out by visiting the archive. Little Unbelievable. treasures. Unbelievable. We'll be right back with Courtney after this. Tell us all about it.